Please, please don't kill me. Tell me why I should spare your life. I know I have no right to ask for mercy, but I didn't mean for this death and destruction. We were just trying to free ourselves. Aldred told us that the Circo would support Loghain, and Loghain would help us be free of the Chantry. Don't you remember what it was like living here? The Templars watching. Always watching. Yes, I do understand. And I hated it as well. The magic was a means to an end. It gave us... It gave me the power to fight for what I believed. Fighting for what you believe is commendable, but the ends do not always justify the means. You don't really believe that, do you, Win? Change rarely comes peacefully. Andraste waged war on the Imperium. She didn't write them a strongly worded letter. She reshaped civilization, freed the slaves, and gave us the Chantry. But people died for it. We thought someone always has to take the first step, force a change, no matter the cost. Nothing is worth what you've done to this place. And now Aldred's gone mad, and we are scattered, doomed to die at the hands of those who seek to right our wrongs. And so now you wallow in self-pity? What else can I do? I'm trapped here. I will spare you, but I do not have time to help you escape. Thank you. The Maker will surely turn his eyes on you for your mercy. You know, and I don't think Vexus can really argue with that position. I mean, that was a mage. She didn't like the Chantry. She was promised that, you know, by this Aldred, that, uh... With blood magic, she would have enough power to uh, escape the Templar's grasp. And uh, that's a little too close to uh, Vex's own uh, position for him to uh, act all high and mighty around her. So, uh, we decide to let the Blood Mage go. And now to continue to explore the rest of the second floor. Hmm. Looks like we can talk to the closet, or more likely someone's in there. Let's get started. This closet seems to be trembling slightly. You hear soft whimpers coming from inside it. It's all right, you can come out now. Are the demons gone? Is it safe? I, I don't want to, to die. I've dealt with them, trust me. If you're sure it's safe, I could take a peek outside. Yes. Are you hurt? Oh, I have a crick in my back and my bum's gone numb. Oh, holy maker, look at this. Those demons didn't know what hit them, did they? Godwin, mage of the Circle of Ferelden, at your service. How did you end up in that closet? There were demons everywhere, blocking my exit. I decided that the best thing to do in that situation was to hide and be very, very quiet. I just really want to be somewhere safe. I think I might stay here for now. Maybe go back into my closet for a little while. <laughs> what a mighty hero of the circle. I've killed most of the demons in the lower floors. You could escape. And go where? The Templars have locked the door. I'm just going to stay here and see what happens. Do what you wish. Your life is your own. Thank you again for saving me. May we meet again in happier, less life-threatening times. Apparently, to stay safe from horrible uh, demons from the Fade, all you have to do is go hide in a closet. 
Um, but anyway, um, if you recall uh, back at Orzammar when we talked with the uh, shady guy in, in Dust Town who was offering to sell us Lyrium, this is the guy here who's uh, buying it. And so uh, you can haggle with him over price and end up getting a good amount of gold out of it. But in any case, uh, he's not the bravest soul, but he is a mage and he is alive, so we've saved one more. And let's continue on through the second floor. Alright, here on the uh, second floor we have reached uh, Irving's office, which you may have recalled from uh, the, uh, Chapter 1, where we uh, first met Duncan, actually. Let's see what's around here. Small painted box, which gives us a side quest. Enchanter's Journal. Okay, let's see what we got here. It's titled, Irving's Mistake. I followed another apprentice through supposed secret maneuvers today and exposed her tendency towards blood magic. The environment of the tower is such that certain modes of thought are encouraged, both for good and ill. The students think we toy with them. The truth is far more intricate and directed. Deviant traits must be exposed early, or the whole of the circle suffers. Aldred has been very helpful in identifying the markers to look for. His skills at misdirection are admirable. I dare say that the apprentices would be shocked at his ability to manipulate them. I must organize a retreat such that the other enchanters can benefit from his skills. So Irving seems highly concerned with rooting out blood mages. Although, in his defense, I think that's less because he is gung-ho about uh, no one ever performing blood magic, and more concerned about what the Templars will do if they find blood mages. Um, and given the fact that all of this has happened and Gregor is getting ready to annul the circle, um, gives some justification to his fears. Right. Another codex. Circles within circles. Arguments between the various fraternities have become more frequent and heated. I have alerted this College of Magi in Cumberland that this needs to be addressed in coming debates. But I fear relations with the Chantry may distract them. I am confident that I can appease the Equitarians and Loyalists, but the Libertarians are proving divisive. Are the isolations isolationists even interested in speaking? The threat of blight has actually served some good in unifying us under a common cause, but it does not bode well that any given table in the Great Hall is likely to be ideologically weighted against its neighbor. We can be such a moody bunch staring over our tea. So, given these documents and what we've seen so far on this floor with the Blood Mages, it seems that the circle was much more fragmented than uh, maybe anyone was willing to admit. And uh, Aldred has taken advantage of a lot of people's uh, disenchantment, no pun intended, with the circle to stage a rebellion. Um, and I believe Aldred has led a sect of the Libertarians in this uh, recent overthrow of the circle. and. Uh, no matter what his intentions originally were, it's resulted in this outbreak of from the Fade. Uh, which this won't is take long. not good for anyone involved. On it. Oops. There we go. Another apprentice cow. We don't need any more of those. Let's see if anything else is in the office. Okay, Irving's chest. Ah, so here is a called the Black Grimoire. A heavy grimoire bound in black leather. Morgan would want to take a look at this. And this is the item that you need in order to initiate Morgan's companion quest. So, uh, the next time we get back to camp, we will make sure that she gets it. In the meantime, it is time to go up to the third floor. Everyone's gone. Or dead. I fear the worst. The uh, decor is getting 
slightly more ominous as we climb the stairs. So, let's take a look and see what's around on the third floor.